Head over to Michael's and grab a wooden crate. Then grab some paper napkins. I found it helpful to remove the napkin lining, but this is optional. Then grab your crate and sand it. Next, pour some hard coat Mod Podge in a roller tray and begin rolling it on the crate. Then add your napkins and roll on another layer of the Mod Podge on top. Flip the crate and continue this process on each section. For tough areas, you can use a paintbrush to brush on the Mod Podge. After the crate is covered, allow it to dry overnight. Then use a combination of a craft knife and sandpaper to remove the excess napkin from the grooves. The napkin that was covered with the hard coat Mod Podge will stay and the excess will peel right off. Stack the crates to hold plants. Hang them on the wall with brackets for shelves. Lay them on the floor with a pillow inside for a pet bed. Or grab two stair treads for extra seating. Start by sanding, staining, and sealing the treads with polyacrylic. Then pre-drill and screw in four caster wheels on the bottom. Flip it over and apply wood glue to both crates. Lay down the crates, add more wood glue on top, and lay on the other tread. And now you have a one-of-a-kind bench. Keep it plain or add some pillows and baskets. All right, so first up, you're going to grab a wood crate. You can find these at most craft stores. I actually got this at Home Depot. Take some Varathane wood stain. Now this is an oil-based stain, so you're gonna wanna make sure you are using gloves while you apply the stain, and you're gonna wanna make sure you have a brush or a staining sponge, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you do this outdoors because this is going to smell very, very chemically, and you wanna make sure that you're not inhaling the fumes. So let's take this outside. All right, so I'm taking my paintbrush and I am applying an even thin stroke of my weathered gray Varathane wood stain. I'm gonna apply this over the entire crate and then it's going to take approximately one to two hours to dry. There are a lot of little nooks and crannies, so taking your time and not rushing through this step is really important. And you can always take a rag to remove any excess stain to help you uh, get through this a little bit quicker to help it dry a little faster. While we're waiting for my wood crate to dry after applying the stain, it's gonna take probably about an hour. I went ahead and had a piece of plywood cut to the same size as the top of the crate. And this is actually going to be turned into kind of an upholstered top. So what you're going to need for this step is a piece of fabric that you like. Uh, and then 
I'm using some quilting batting. Um, however, you're welcome to use foam if you'd like. This is what I had available. So I kind of cut it relatively close to the size of the top and I'm going to use a staple gun. I'm actually going to use the fabric and I'm going to cover the piece of plywood. I'm gonna try and get it framed up to the size of the plywood just so that I see the designs that I wanna see. So the name of the game with this part of this step is to pull the fabric taut um, to make sure that you're eliminating any wrinkles. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna use a staple gun to secure this to the top of the lid. So I'm trying to pull it as taut as I can. So we're gonna flip it over just to kind of see. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna be pulling this in so many different directions so that I'm eliminating any wrinkles. Now you can either do one of two things. When you have these edges that start to get kind of bulky, um, I wanna make sure that this lid closes pretty nicely. So I'm probably going to cut off some of this excess fabric, but I wanna make sure that um, I'm finishing the edge around in the, on the corner so I don't want it to look super sloppy. So you're gonna wanna grab some scissors. I'm just gonna eliminate that excess. All right, I wanna preface this step with, make sure that you pre-drill some pilot holes in the sides of the lid if you're gonna make this project for your decorative hinges, and then use uh, a sharp object to poke holes through the fabric um, where the pilot holes are, just so you don't end up in a kerfuffle where your drill totally sucks up all your fabric as you're trying to drill the screws in. So, um, use a manual screwdriver for this gonna line it up where I put my holes and then I'm going to drill this in it makes it so much easier now what we're gonna do because this um, wood is so pliable um, you don't need to pre drill and I wouldn't recommend doing it just because these pieces of wood aren't super duper thick but the screws that came with the decorative hinges aren't very long so I feel pretty confident it's gonna hold just fine and now I'm gonna go in with a screwdriver and just manually secure it. All right, so there we go. We have a lid that opens and closes. The last step we are going to take is attaching wheels to the base of this storage ottoman so it will roll around. Okay, so now we're gonna apply these fun little vintagey wheels to the base of the uh, ottoman. So I have some very tiny little screws for our ottoman with opening lid, it's now complete. All right, there you have it. I have my cute new rolling storage ottoman with lid, as you can see. I have little decorative hinges on the back and I think the wheels just add a really cute little vintagey touch to it, especially since it's a fun weathered gray color. And it's perfect for blanket storage, it's perfect for pillow storage. If you wanna use it as a uh, crate for dog toys or cat toys, I think it would be a great solution for your home. Thank you so much for watching Home Talk and I will see you next time. Bye.